you. Um, my name is Kathleen Howe. I'm a graduate student at the University of Hawaii at Hilo, working with Dr. Susan Jarvey at the Daniel K. Inouye College of Pharmacy. I <coughs> testify in support of SB 2516 for funding for rat lungworm research and education. I'm here on behalf of myself and the many others who have experienced this tragic disease and are not able to be here today. Seven years ago today, my son was in a coma at the Hilo Medical Center, completely <coughs> paralyzed, paralyzed with a tracheal tube in his throat, on a ventilator, with a stomach peg and on a feeding tube, not expected to survive or ever recover because of, par of a parasitic infection he contracted on Hawaii Island. We will never know for sure how he contracted angiostrongoliasis or rat lungworm disease. Because I was working out of the country when he became sick, my sister, who lives at ground zero for this disease, took him to the ER and told doctors she thought he had rat lungworm disease. She told her he had the flu. She took him back a few days later and told them he had rat lungworm disease and they needed to put him on steroids. They said, Auntie, we don't want to listen to you. Finally, when he could no longer urinate because the nerves to his bladder were damaged, he was admitted. If my son had gotten early treatment, he may never have gone into a coma, and he may have recovered. Instead, due to lack of awareness by the medical community, he is now disabled. His case has cost the state, his insurance company, and his family a very large sum of money that I am confident is well in excess of $1 million. Cluster cases of this disease started in the Pune district in 2001 to 2005 and continued to occur on a yearly basis in that area. And yet when my son got sick, doctors didn't know how to identify or treat it. At the same time my son was in the hospital, there were two other cases of rat lungworm disease, a woman and her fiance. The woman went into a coma about two weeks before my son and she is still seriously disabled. She was also turned away from the ER multiple times. While my son was in the hospital, I heard of other cases. There was a nurse from the Hilo Medical Center who was on leave because her young son had the disease, and he was at Kapiolani Children's Hospital going to physical therapy. Another I learned about from one of the doctors who came into my son's room and told me he had another case that was almost identical to my son. Every year since my son's illness, I am contracted by people who have the disease or I hear of cases. There was a young child that died, another that is now mentally disabled, another who is blind, all cases of rat lungworm. This past year we had two deaths related to rat lungworm disease, one in Kona and one in Pune. A young woman from Maui who is such an inspiration to her community for the work she has done is still in a wheelchair more than a year later and in so much pain from the nerve damage. A man from the mainland who recently brought his granddaughter to Hawaii to start a master's program at the University in Hilo was infected here, presented symptoms when he went home, and is now in a nursing home because he is so damaged. The list goes on and on. The CDC and Department of Health state that serious cases are rare. We have multiple serious cases a year, and if this is the case, then we have an epidemic of rat lungworm disease that we are unaware of in Hawaii. In 2011, at the second International Rat Lungworm Workshop Disease here, held here in Honolulu, I met Dr. Susan Jarvie from the Daniel K. Inouye College of Pharmacy. Like many others, she was not aware of how serious this disease is until she heard my presentation. One week after the conference, we began to work together. I aligned myself with the university to be able to do research and have credibility as an educator on rat lungworm disease. I now have a student loan of over $100,000 because of my decision to go back to school to do this work that I truly feel the state of Hawaii should have been doing. I will be 63 years old next week. The thought of graduating in a few months with this huge burden of debt, along with debt from my son's medical treatments and costs, weighs heavily on me. However, because of my work as a researcher, I can tell people including the woman that prepares school lunches for students in Volcano with produce purchased from local growers, that the vinegar or food grade hydrogen peroxide or grapefruit seed oil that they are using to wash their lettuce with, thinking it will kill the parasite and keep them safe, does not work. Because of my work as a researcher, I can tell people who live on rainwater catchment, and there are a great many of them on Hawaii Island, that the slugs and snails that crawl into their water tanks can indeed shed rat lungworm parasites and they can live for quite some time in your tank. 
Research is the only way we can continue to find the truths in this disease, what works and what doesn't work. Without research, we are basing our decisions and actions on folklore and myths. When my son got sick, one of my first thoughts was, we have to tell the school garden buoy. I was a teacher who used school gardens as a way to teach, and I knew nothing about this disease. Today, I'm working with five schools on Hawaii Island on a pilot project to develop an integrated pest management plan for the control of these invasive slug and snail carriers of rat lungworm disease. Invasive slugs and snails are agricultural pests. They have also helped decimate our native snails, and they have a negative impact on native seedling regeneration. Like Dengue has the Fight the Bite campaign, we need a Mug the Slug and Nail the Snail type campaign. This is what the students and teachers at my partner schools are doing. We are learning best practices for control of invasive slugs and snails, and the students are learning how to collect data, use ArcGIS to make story maps, and become community educators. We hope to make this practice a mainstay for Hawaii Island School Garden Projects. There are many practical ways to deal with this disease. I have funded this work with a GoFundMe account because all five grant proposals I worked for this work were rejected because nobody knows about this disease. Even in Hawaii, the majority of people do not know about this disease. I refer to rat lungworm disease as Hawaii's STD, slug and snail transmitted disease, and I say let's talk about it. I say that because for too long this problem has been shoved under the rug. Just as AIDS was first attributed to something only happening in the gay community and its victims were ostracized, so with rat lungworm. We have been told that the disease is because we grow gardens and eat from them, or it's our lifestyle, or most recently and most injurious of all, that the disease was due to unsanitary conditions like you would find in a developing country. None of these are true, and the last only serve to finger point the Puna District, one of the poorest districts in the state with a large number of residents who have no health insurance or are on state health insurance. This is a foodborne and waterborne disease, and no funding has been allocated by state or federal agencies for the control of this disease. There has been no money allocated to conduct research on the parasite, the vectors, and the disease itself. itself. There has been no help for those whose lives have been so tragically interrupted or destroyed by this disease. Case numbers look low because there is no simple diagnostic, although we are working on it. But I challenge you to look at the numbers of hospitalization and the duration of hospitalization that are the result of this disease in Hawaii, and I can guarantee you this disease is costing the state a lot of money and will continue to do so until something is done. In closing, I'm submitting my testimony in support of full funding of SB 2516. Money are found for the coconut rhinoceros beetle, for the coffee borer beetle, for myconia, for fire ants. The number of invasive species problems we have are staggering, and they are all important. But rat longworm disease has caused death and disability in Hawaii, and that is why this issue must be moved to the top of the list of important <coughs> issues and receive full funding. I ask you to consider my testimony and pass this to Mahalo for the work that you do. Thank you. I want to particularly thank you for your testimony this morning and uh, the Committee on Commerce Consumer Protection and Health. We heard a measure that asked for um, the Department of BCCA and Health to work together to help with continuing education for folks <coughs> to understand uh, diseases endemic to Hawaii. This is one of the ones that came to mind along with dengue, and we've got an agreement to move forward with that. So we'll be looking for um, information from the research that you folks are doing at UH Hilo to help inform the kinds of um, materials that should go into an online continuing education for um, primary care providers. Wonderful. That will help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions?